So uh, welcome to the first of an occasional series. This is the first one we've done. I think we'll do some more of them of um, interviews with interesting people and interesting clients of WP Engine. Um, I'm Ben Metcalf. I'm one of the founders of WP Engine, and with me is uh, Phil Simon, who is an author of Hello, is an author of The Age of the Platform, along with a number of other books. Um, I noticed from the list one of the books was called. Uh, Why Systems Fail, an Insider Guide to Successful IT Projects. I wish I'd read that many years ago, or at least I wish it was written many years ago, because I've had many IT projects that have not been successful in my earlier career. Um, And also you wrote a book called The New Small as well, which is kind of interesting. But we are talking particularly about platforms. Um, We're very pleased to have the age of the platform uh, on uh, WP Engine, which is great uh, website. Thank you very much. Yeah, you've got all my sites now. It makes life a lot easier got, on, many, on many levels. All of the sites. Awesome. Well, that's what we try and do. I think yes. I'm up to six now. Great. Including the sandbox. Time. And I don't count the staging areas, but uh, yeah, huge, huge fan. Well, we're, uh, we're pleased to have you. Um, but we are going to talk a little bit about platforms, what they are, what that means, some intersection with WordPress and stuff like that. So. Phil, do you want to just sort of go into uh, an introduction and overview of what the age of the platform is about, what a platform is, that kind of thing? Sure. To, to me, Ben, everybody's using this word platform. Every company is trying to brand itself as a platform for something. And sometimes I think it's appropriately used, sometimes I think the term is bastardized. So I really tried to set out in this book to define what I meant by a platform. And to me, there are two, at a high level, fundamentally different types of platforms. You have what I call platforms with a lowercase p, so an operating system or a telephone line, uh, something along those lines. And then you have platforms with a big P, and and that's really platform as a business model. And to that end, companies like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google have embraced platform thinking as well as other organizations like WordPress and LinkedIn and Twitter, and talk about some of those later. So just by way of example, Amazon, when it started in, in 1994, early 1995, as you know, sold books. Well, now, 17 years later, Amazon does a lot more than sell books. And I'm not just talking about selling uh, beef jerky or CDs or DVDs or MP3s. I'm talking about um, EC2 and AWS, cloud services. I'm talking about hardware with the Kindle. I'm talking about Amazon being a publisher. Um, I'm talking about Amazon doing 10 different things. So that's what I'm talking about with platform thinking. Google is the same way. Uh, Google still makes uh, something like 90% of its revenue from search and ads. But as you know, Google does so much more with with Google Glasses and Chrome, the operating system, Android, Gmail, YouTube, Blogger. So these are individual, what I call in the book, planks. And less people think that this is just something that companies with billions in revenues and thousands of employees can do. I myself have embraced platform thinking. Four or five years ago, I made all of my income from one very specific type of consulting, the type of consulting that actually informed my first book. And I joke with people that if I didn't write Why New Systems Fail, I would have needed to see a shrink. Now, four or five years later, I do very little, if any, of that type of consulting. I I do public speaking. I've written some books. I do different types of consulting. Uh, I do different types of writing. So it's about diversifying. It's not about just doing one thing, even if you do it really well. That's something that I know um, WP Engine embraces as well. Yeah, and so when we think about platforms in a, a raw sense, how would you, for someone who maybe is a WP Engine customer or someone who's interested in WordPress and might be stumbling across this video, but maybe doesn't think about platforms on a day-by-day basis in a sort of very one or two sentences, how would you describe to a semi-technical person what a platform is? Okay. At a very high level, it's just a collection of planks. Right? So, for a technical person, I would say two things. Embrace different lines of business, just like Amazon, Apple, Facebook have done, but use existing platforms as planks in your own. So, if you're an author like I am, you'd be silly to not sell your book on Amazon. Let's say you went to Elance and you paid $30,000 to have a developer build you a website, right? Well, that's fine, but why would you? 
People trust Amazon. It's easy. It's got the one click. So to me, that's more than worth paying the 30% cut as an author to Amazon. Same thing with iOS. I have an app for my last book, The New Small. I guess I could figure out a way to get it to people to jailbreak their phones, but why wouldn't I want to put it in the app store and kick Apple 30%? So I have always said that 70% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Makes sense. See, because I, I've, as I was talking be, before we recorded and when we chatted yesterday, I've spent a lot of time helping companies with plat platforms. It's something that I've done in my in the background, and I think what's really awesome and exciting about platforms is that they give folks like you, folks like I, folks like other people, um, the ability to go ahead and use what is a foundation or a building block to go away and build something even greater that you wouldn't been able to have built if you didn't have that initial building block to then go ahead and build more with. Absolutely. And, and in the book, I talk about this new age. And yes, platforms have been with us for a long time, but we've never seen the sort of democratized development that we're seeing now. What are there, 650,000 apps in the App Store? Probably more than that for Android. Now, how does that happen? That happens with, for the technical people out there, open APIs. It happens by giving away SDKs and letting people build things on top of your platform. So in the book, I write about how Steve Jobs was obviously a very smart guy. But you can't tell me, though, that four years ago or five years ago when the App Store was launched, Steve Jobs knew that Angry Birds would be downloaded 400 million times. Right? You can't predict it. So you give people the tools and then you let them build on top of your platform and then you see what happens. That's basically um, the benefit is that you're going to get all this external innovation and you can really internally spend less money on developers and because you don't know right what's going to be successful the same thing with kickstarter if you look at the pebble watch the guys wanted to raise 10 i'm sorry a hundred thousand dollars and they raised 10 million now who could have predicted that if you were a venture capitalist and these guys wanted a million dollars you probably would have said you're crazy sony actually had already released uh, a watch with apps and it, it didn't do very much so again there's this notion of unpredictability yeah, I think it's really interesting that um, you mentioned the iPhone example. I heard different rumors and different, obviously Apple is very secretive, but there is a lot of talk that when they launched, as you will remember, when they launched the iPhone, you couldn't put apps on it. And in fact, we f sometimes f f forget that there was that initial period where the answer was, if you want to run an app, you've got to build an HTML-based page uh, and, and put an icon on the home de uh, desktop. But Steve Jobs said, there's no way that we, the carriers would ever let you run your own code on their network. And of course, nine months later, suddenly the whole app ecosystem came about. And there's a lot of different views as to whether or not... Um, but but the, think about it. Jobs was smart enough to realize that even if the carriers would allow it, you know, you're a pretty technical guy, I'm a pretty technical guy, most people don't want to fiddle with it. Right, right. The beauty and the Apple is more of a closed ecosystem, as we talked about. But I think that a lot of people don't mind having a curated set of apps. You have those people out there who are going to jailbreak it, right? They want to have porn apps or, or whatever, and you can't stop them. But I would say that ninety-five percent of all people just want to one click, right, yeah. or download something and it works. So there's something to be said, and I write about this in the book. All of those companies, the gang of four: Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google make products that people want to use, not that they have to use. If you go back 15 years to the big foreign technology, you're probably talking about Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, and IBM. Nobody used those products because they had to, or very few. You used them because you went to work and your company had an Oracle database and you SQL Server, blah, blah, blah. Well, there are other search engines than Google. There are other social networks than Facebook. And if you look at this evolution, this consumerization of IT, why is it that people are flocking to Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google and flocking away from MySpace, from AOL, from Yahoo? So these companies were doing something right, and in a nutshell, they were embracing the platform, and to your point, they were embracing ecosystems because they realized that the, the community could do things and generate excitement in a way that a company couldn't. So when I run a Kickstarter project for one of my books or when I have an app, there are people who know me and they're going to buy the book or they're going to download the app. And Apple is taking advantage of that on a massive scale. Yeah, and I think the, to key on the point you made about the community and the excitement, which is something which you, you can, what I believe you know, we, we call um, 
um, astroturf in the sense that you can try and fake it if you're a company. But frankly, you know, in terms of we talk about gra uh, grassroots interest, and obviously astroturf is fake grass, and so you can kind of fake that. But it's it's very hard to do properly. What you really want is true, genuine grassroots interest around your platform, and that's what drives that community interest. And I think for me, as someone who's been very involved with WordPress for a long time since, frankly, the project was started. It's amazing to see that although there is a, a, a commercial company behind it, uh, Automatic, which pays for most of the development of the uh, core files, the, the core project, there's this amazing community, both from individual uh, people, you know, in their bedroom or their basement or wherever, all the way through to funded companies like WP Engine and others that are 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 gathered around this 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 platform and for me wordpress is a plat a platform and what wp engine is trying to do is is very much a, a, a platform approach but it's the community that met was what makes that interesting and i think um having all the plugins the themes the people who can help other people build things is what makes or breaks that and was what given wordpress a advantage over other even other open source projects sure. that haven't and 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 that. Let's not forget also the, the WordPress camps, right? right. And, or uh, you go there and you meet other people and you start talking. And uh, I met a developer, a guy that runs a, a site by the name of um, Nine Sites, John Hawkins. John Hawkins, and yeah. He's got a WP tattoo. He does. And, and the second I saw that, I said, oh, we're going to get along great. What are your top 10 plugins? And he listed his 10, and I'd heard of nine of them. Right. And of course, I wanted to check out the other 10. So there's this connection that I, I talk about in the book. When you see someone with an iPhone, it's part of their personality. One of the things I'll ask people with an iPhone, complete strangers, what's your favorite app? Yeah. Right. And there's that energy. There's that enthusiasm. I, I don't think that anyone goes up to someone and says, you know, what's your favorite Microsoft Excel function? <laughs> right. I think those are great examples. I and mean, obviously, the iPhone is not in everyone's pocket, but a smartphone is in most people's pocket. That is a great example of where platform and the community of uh, people around those given platforms are coming into the uh, field of vision and the radars of what you might call the average con consumer or the, or the uh, man on the street. And I think that's excellent. And even in the WordPress world, you know, we all talk to a, a small business owner, someone that owns a bakery who has a WordPress site or someone who has a I don't know, a, a, a doctor's office, and they'll say to us, you know, do I want to use which, you know, which uh, sitemaps uh, uh, plugin uh, do I want to use, or which SEO plugin do I want to use? So these people are being touched by the platform and by the community fostered around that platform, even though they are quote unquote lay people, or at least not sort of technical people in it. And I think that's sure. really interesting. And, 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 and like you said, you know, the, the iPhone example is great as well. And then by extension, I think WP Engine does that as well. I'm a reasonably technical guy, but I don't know much about PHP or CSS. I can look at code and make some tweaks, but maybe I'll screw it up. So that's the beauty of having, say, for example, a staging area. So I can make mistakes without it being in production, figure it out, and then port it over to production. So it's, uh, again, you guys have that sort of platform thinking, and I think that it, there's no coincidence that we, we hit it off so well. Yeah. So. Your book is called The Age of the Platform, and it's available in Amazon and all other good online bookstores and offline bookstores as well. And would you would you care to highlight just in a couple of sentences one of your other books that people might want to check out if they've already checked out The Art of the Platform? Sure. I, I keep calling it The Art of the Platform. No. It's The Age of the Platform. It's funny. My PR firm did that as well. And, there you go. I, I apologize. You have no, no, to, it's, someone's going to go and create a book called The Art of the Platform right now to get the SEO on it. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I worked very hard to get this book out very quickly because I'm not that smart. Uh, everyone was talking about platforms, but there was no book out there uh, highlighting the platform as a business model. Uh, my last book, I think, is also worth reading, uh, the, the New Small. Mm -hmm. It gets into cloud computing and mobility, open source software, social media, technologies that small companies are using to act really big. Uh, it's funny, there are companies with 5, 10, 15 people that can do things that right now they could not do 10 years ago because of the drop, you know, because if you want to sign up for Amazon cloud services like Netflix, you can do it if you're a company of one or a company of 20. So there's been this, again, this democratization of different technologies. They've come down in price. If you wanted to start a company uh, you know, 14, 15 years ago during the dot-com boom, you, you really needed you know, tens of millions of dollars to get the proper IT infrastructure. Now, if you know what you're doing, you can probably spend 5000 Which is if, which is what we've done at WP Engine, although we spent a little more than 5000 but we certainly haven't had to, uh, I think we have, 
I don't know how many hundred, three or four, five hundred servers and other bits and pieces now, but that's all through some of the cloud and some of the uh, the platform stuff that we're able to leverage. That ten years ago we would have to have made a uh, a capex expense and doing other things. Right. With. So yeah, yeah, and great. to transform that into an operational expense. So think about it. If you're thinking of starting a business, and I covered this in the book, you know, it's hard to come up with thirty or fifty or a hundred thousand dollars. That's that significant. But what if I could pay? Three hundred dollars a month, and then if right. I needed more, I could use more. But hopefully, it's because I've got more sales or more transactions or more hits or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I think the last two books are worth checking out. So, um, it's called the Age of the Platform, the Age of the Platform dot com, which is hosted on WP Engine. Proudly, um, also, oh. also Phil Simon Systems dot com. I think is your own blog and site, isn't it? And I'm, I'm secretly very envious that you wrote that because, like I said before, my WP Engine uh, bits and pieces, I spend a lot of time consulting for large companies on platforms, and um, I think I should have written this book. I should perhaps write a rival book when I have okay. some spare time, which running a startup is you got to You got to get you, my friend. I'd be shocked if you don't have one out soon. So, okay. Well, thank you very much for the time, and um, yeah, do check those books out, and we'll put links in the show notes at the bottom. Thank you. Okay.